Good afternoon, class. Today, what I'd like to do is to go over the next example in balancing chemical equations. So for this one, I decided to make it a much tougher one. It's a double replacement a reaction. And so it was a lot more um, complex. So I thought this is a good one to use as, as an example. Um, so the way that I start with it, um, to balance the equations, I list out all the different chemicals. So in this one, it's aluminum carbonate plus hydrochloric acid gives you aluminum chloride plus water and carbon dioxide. So I list out all the elements, aluminum, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and chlorine. And I do the same on the other side because as per the rules of chemistry, whatever is on the product, the reactant side must be on the product side of the reaction. So what I do next in order to, so then I, I feel I can fill in all of the numbers here. And as long as the numbers are the same on both sides of the, equa of the formula, the equation is balanced and you have a good problem. Um, however, there is a, so there is a method and I don't know necessarily if this is going to be the method that works for you, but I know this works for me quite well. And the way that I do that is I, I do this. I look at the reactant side, or actually, I re honestly, I really just look anywhere on this formula, and I say, what element or what compound here is the, the meanest looking one? The, the one of the, mo the most complicated, the one that I really don't want to have to deal with at all. And that's the one I'll always declare as one. I will just say that one, if at all possible, I'm going to make that one with a coefficient of one. So which one is that in this case? It is uh, aluminum carbonate. I look at this and I say, wow, that's complex. Let's leave that as one, as our coefficient. So then I write down, so then I, I have to write down everything from here. So aluminum has two, so I write two. There's three carbonate um, ions. So what I have, is that means there's three carbons and then three times three or nine oxygens. So I'm like, okay, got that down. I don't know quite yet how many hydrogens and chlorines there are going to be, even though I've written them down because that's the answer. Um, I don't know quite yet, so I'm going to hold off on that. Then I look at this side of the equation and I say, because that's where I get most of my, um, I get most of the other clues as to how to balance this. So I look over here and say, okay, aluminum, there's only one aluminum atom on this side. There's only one aluminum atom on this side. This has two. Therefore, this coefficient must be two because there must be two aluminum atoms on this side. So I put a two here, put a two here, and I say, okay, that's good. We're, we're making progress. But now I have to balance it out because I've got chlorine here, and there's three chlorine atoms here, and two and the times two, which is six. This gives me a hint, by the way. And to, this is a, so what I do now from here is I say, okay, well, you know what? Now I look back at, the, I look at the six chlorines here and I say, okay, I need to look over on the reactant side of the equation. I've got hydrogen chloride. Well, there's one chlorine atom here. There were three here. That means I need six total chlorine atoms. So six hydrogen, six chlorines, six and six. Okay, so it's looking good. I'm making progress. Um, but if this equation, this equation could completely fall apart if the other two products don't balance. So you have to be careful with that. So then I take a look at this. Say hydrogen, I've got H2O, so two hydrogens and one oxygen. Okay, what a coefficient would, and, and really right now I have no information about the um, oxygens, but I do have information about the hydrogens which is I've got six of them. So that means I put a three here as my coefficient. Three times two is six. For, so my hydrogens are balanced. That's good. Now we move on to the carbon dioxide. Again, if you noticed, I didn't touch the oxygen in that, in that one. I, I didn't do anything with that yet because it's not just here, but it's also in this product as well. So I need to be careful and I'll have to put that off until later because that's a little bit more of a complex um, atom to deal with. So I look at this side of the equation and say, okay, this product that says, okay, there's carbon here. There was carbon on this side. There were three carbon atoms on this side. So therefore I need to put a coefficient of three on this side to give me three carbon atoms. Now this is where we, we pretty much would go fingers crossed, hope, hope this works because 
if the oxygens don't balance out and I don't get nine, like I did on this side, something's wrong and I've got the, I, this equation doesn't balance and I have to start over. So we look at this and go, all right, here we go. Three times two oxygens is six. And then three times one is three. Three plus six is nine. So we've balanced everything, right? Everything on this side and everything on this side balances out completely. And so we have a completely balanced equation and that is really good. Um, what I'm gonna, so that's, that concludes how to do one of these problems. Um, one of the things I did come up with a second method of how to balance these. Um, and so in the next video, what I'll do is I'll show you how to use, how to do that one, that method, you know, same problem, but it'll be the, it'll be a different method to solving it just to give you some options to see which one you would prefer. So good luck in your studies.